Hey guys, this is James from Man Tripping and Men Who Blog. We are here on a premium tasting featuring Belfour Spirits. They sent us these two awesome bottles. One is the bourbon whiskey finished with Texas pecan wood. And I bet you can tell where these guys are from by that, that Texas pecan wood. Not just regular old pecan wood, but Texas pecan wood. That sounds so tasty. I have not yet tasted this, but I am looking forward to doing so in just a few minutes. And then we also have the their rye whiskey. Uh, I'm also joined by Tom from Bourbon Blog, but let's uh, toss it over to the guys from Belfour, and uh, they'll tell a little bit about uh, what they do, why they started, and uh, everything else we might need to know. And then let's ta uh, Tom will talk a little bit about uh, his site, and then we'll do some tasting. How about that, guys? Sounds great, James, and uh, thanks for having us today. We're excited Thank to be you. here. Well, this all started uh, about six years ago uh, with my uh, my oldest son here and my daughter, Reagan. And um, we decided that we were going to get into brown spirits and um, whiskey in particular. Uh, we, we feel that it's a, a wonderful field. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, art and craft to this, to the business. And... Um, you know, I feel like, um, you know, there's no two whiskeys that taste the same. And uh, it doesn't matter if the nostrils are the same and, you know, you use the same yeast. It, it just, they never turn out the same. And it's always a mystery exactly what you're going to get. And uh, our goal was to uh, try to make the best uh, bourbon whiskey that we can and, and the best rye whiskey that we can. Uh, I grew up in Canada uh, drinking rye whiskey uh, in my younger days. And uh, we always thought it was very important for us to uh, make a really good rye whiskey. So we have two different uh, rye whiskeys. Uh, we have our regular rye, uh, 94 proof, and we have our limited edition uh, straight rye whiskey, which Dane uh, made himself. We're very proud of. He made uh, the first 12 barrels of our uh, of our beginning of Belfort Spirits. Wow, well, that's awesome. Well, Tom, I, I, I'm going to lie a little bit because I we already have some people uh, asking questions. So first of all, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Irene Wilkins. Thanks for tuning in, Re Irene. And then we have Running Rebels, which I'm going to assume that has to be from Nevada. So uh, the question is, does, does Southern distribute this in Nevada? Oh, that's that's actually a really good question. Um, is was that was that one Running Rebels there, Tom? Is that is that, is yeah, that running Rebels from our uh, who's watching us on YouTube is asking about if, oh, if you distribute okay. it in Nevada yet. Yeah, I know we're not we're not in Nevada yet, but we definitely have uh, plans to get there as soon as possible. Um, Excellent. Yeah, right now we're we, we started in Illinois and Texas. Uh, we're also in North Dakota, South Dakota, soon to be in uh, Missouri, uh, Tennessee, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and uh, Canada. Uh, of course, uh, where I grew up, and uh, hoping to get to Canada sometime later this summer. Right cool. And then, in case there's anybody else asking about distribution, uh, can they just go to your website and there's a uh, product locator? Or is there a uh, a distribution email that people can ask about? Yeah, if you go to BelfourSpirits.com, uh, there is a product uh, locator uh, based off of your zip code. Um, so you know, our goal is to get you know all across North America. Um, and do that as soon as possible. It's just, you know, with what's happened here for the last five, six months, uh, it's really put a, a damper on us. And, you know, we, we still work hard at it every day, but, uh, you know, as soon as things open up, like the Canadian border, we'll be back on, on track and open as many states as possible. Excellent. Well, we appreciate that. Sorry, sorry to preempt you there, Tom. I always like to, no, if, if there's somebody wonderful. who's looking to buy the product that we're talking about, I always give those guys a priority because without people buying your stuff, there's not people like you sending us stuff to enjoy and drink with friends. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Running Rebels. Yes. Hopefully you can get that out there pretty soon. So, Tom, uh, kick it up. What, uh, tell us a little bit about the Bourbon Blog and, and uh, what your thoughts are. I'm sure you, you probably have more of an uh, expert knowledge of, of what these guys uh, have, where these guys have come from and some of the stuff that people are saying about them uh, than, than I do. Well, um, well, we're always learning together, James, and uh, obviously, it's, especially over the last several weeks, James and I have tasted some great things together uh, virtually. But uh, gentlemen, uh, really great to 
to be with all of you. And I started bourbonblanc.com. Uh, for those that don't know, about 15 years ago, I had been working on some documentaries. I did a documentary on bourbon uh, that I had uh, actually been uh, working on a film festival with the actress that played Marianne on Gilligan's Island. And it really inspired me to create my own documentary on bourbon because there had not been one for a while, quite some time. And that was right when, coincidentally, uh, the rise of bourbon was happening. So I grew it into a blog to tell a lot of great stories over the years about the rise of bourbon whiskey. And now I do a lot of whiskey education. Uh, so um, again, log on to bourbonblog.com after you watch this. We also uh, just uh, recently have been, we've done it in the past quite a bit, but we've just recently been reminding people that we also host virtual private tastings. So we do um, a show much like uh, James does during uh, the weeknights and, and almost every night we're doing a show, but we also do virtual tastings. Um, so you can log on to our website to learn about our virtual tastings for events. Uh, but um, I tell you, I actually already poured a little of this uh, Belfour, uh, the pecan uh, wood barrel finished uh, bourbon. And I'm, I'm really a fan of it. I mean, I just, I just have been sipping it a little bit. I had it a few nights ago. I know James is going to wait. I'm not now James. I haven't tried the rye. So you and I will be surprised together, but that I've got the rye right here. So you do have the rye. Okay, do we want to do the rye first? Rye, but I'm I'm rocking your uh, your Y. Ah, thank you for that. Because thank you. It's the Y whiskey tasting glass. So, so for you for you guys sitting there in, in I think you said you're in Dallas. Uh, Tom and I have been uh, been friends. I don't know if we've seen each other more than like two times in the last ten years, but uh, <laughs> a few more maybe, but not too many. When, when when Tom and I met, we were extremely drunk and uh, in, enjoying copious amounts of bourbon down at uh, at Bourbon Fest. And frankly, I'm surprised that either of us even remembered each other's names or emails or, or how to get at all each other. But honestly, that that that's the kind of magic that that bourbon is to bring to bring guys and and bring women as well together, uh, in in uh, in friendship. So uh, it's been a, it's been a, right. a good last uh, decade. I can't believe it's been a decade, but I know I've known you for ten years. It's amazing. We've had a lot of fun and we've done a lot of cool projects together. And it's great to be joining you tonight, having this. Uh, this bourbon, and I, I, I say this too. I really, I love the bottle. The bottle has this uh, real elegance, this old school elegance about it. Um, the whiskey and the bottle are both really nice. The bottle's really cool with the, with the, like the ridges on it that you can like, like you can feel the ridges. So what, what inspired that bottle? Yeah, so um, we wanted something that was very uh, unique and noticeable on the shelves. Uh, again, I tell everybody. That bottle represents about uh, version 100. <laughs> uh, it took us about two years to uh, finalize. And um, we were inspired by the Gatsby era, uh, the Roaring Twenties, Art mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we wanted something that, uh, you know, 100 years ago, uh, uh, the Roaring Twenties and, and, you know, the speakeasies and, and all the private parties and stuff like that, and, you know, the high... Uh, elegance level that this bottle is represents that era um you know there's the, the eagle on the neck uh that's the uh, the latest version of uh, my eagle and uh, very proud about that because one of my best friends uh, back home jeff Fries, and his daughter uh she actually created that eagle for us and she sat in the stanley cup in uh, 1999 when we won the cup so um uh, very proud of that fact and uh it goes along well with the package, uh, the wings on the side, and, and obviously uh, the Belfour name. Uh, we're very proud of it, and uh, we're proud of the fact that we've been involved in everything uh, right from the beginning uh, with our business. Uh, we're not just a, you know another celebrity just slapping our name on the MGP and, and calling it good and don't know anything about uh, the packaging or, or the whiskey that goes in it. Uh, you know, Bane and I have like I said, learn, try to learn everything we can about this business. Uh, you know, uh, I always use the analogies of hockey because I spent my first three years in the minors uh, playing in Saginaw, Michigan, and playing with Team Canada, traveling all over the world. Of course, I didn't want to play in the minors. I wanted to be with the Blackhawks. That was my goal was to play in the NHL. But being sent to the minors was probably the best thing for my career. It helped me learn the trade. Uh, learn the pro game, you know, learn about my game myself. And once I got into the NHL, you know, I stuck there for the better part of 20 years. Well, I always tell everyone that Dane and I have been in the minors here with our, <laughs> our whiskey business for six years, learning the trade and, you know, trying to perfect it. You know, research and development goes into every one of our products. 
Um, and, you know, that's why uh, the flavors that we've created are very smooth, uh, easy to drink, neat. And that was our goal. We want everybody to be able to drink our whiskeys neat and, uh, you know, not get that bitter beer, beer, bitter beer face that you see some people get, you know, from drinking some whiskeys. Right. You know, well, one of the things that I always like, too, is, um, you know, you get these people every once in a while that say, you know, I don't like whiskey at all. I don't, I can't try it. I had a bad experience with it. And um, I'm, I always tell them, like, you know, this is a little different than those types of whiskeys. This is much smoother, easy to drink. Just try a little sip of it. And, uh, you know, they try it and they're like, oh, my gosh, this is whiskey. They can't believe it's whiskey. And that makes us so proud when we hear that. And, you know, they, they finish the drink up and they're like, man, that's the, that's really nice. And, and then we always finish with, you know, that's what good whiskey tastes like. So, you know, we're very proud that we put the, the time and effort into everything we've done. Um, you know, all the mash bill, uh, the grain selection, uh, Dane doing his internship. It's all uh, the hard work and effort that goes into our, our brand. And it pays off in the end. Well, I'm thrilled you're talking about uh, Northern Michigan because I just got an order of uh, of stuff from Cherry Republic from uh, Traverse City, and I had a uh, a wonderful bottle of wine from from uh, Leland Aw Cellars last uh, last night. So, at that you know Saginaw and, and Northern Michigan entirely is uh, is one of those places that I think if you haven't been there, uh, y'all don't know what you're missing. Yeah, it's a beautiful state. Yeah, it's, I, uh, the weather there is just beautiful, and and uh, People are very friendly, and everyone there loves car stuff. So lots of drag racing and all kinds of racing goes on there. And Dane and I both love racing, so we fit in really well there. We used to have uh, our shop there, Carmen Incorporated, where we would store muscle cars and build street rods and pick up trucks. So, yeah, very dear to my heart, and, and that's where Dane was born, was in Saginaw, Michigan. And they play hockey the way hockey was meant to be played, on a lake in the middle of winter. Not in, uh, not, not in not in some southern state like uh, Southern California or Texas, where you're grateful to be grateful to have ice, but uh, playing indoors isn't quite the same as. Uh, I, I went to high school in in, in Boston, and we uh, we enjoyed playing on the lakes there, and yeah. even even uh, cracked the ice and got our skates wet a couple of times. But that's, yeah, for sure, <laughs> that's like, the fun of it. <laughs> nothing like a pond hockey game. So we're having lots of a, a bunch of different questions here. Uh, Tom from uh, or Tommy S from uh, YouTube is asking if you have any Father's Day discounts online. Uh, from the sales perspective, uh, what I can probably give you guys, because I help out sales a little bit, is uh, our 200 mLs, which, which is actually what you have there, James and uh, Tom. Um, well, you should be able to, don't quote me, it depends on what store um, you go to, but we, we don't have any online presence right now, um, unless you're you're interacting with your local li liquor stores that do have an online presence, but uh, um, there may be a the price of one deal coming up shortly. And again, I can't give you the exact quoted price line because every liquor store is a little bit different, but please do pay attention around the holidays. You should expect to see something uh, where you can get your hands on a great afford. Thanks. And then go to bellforspirits.com and find all your social media links make sure they follow you on Facebook and Twitter and, I assume you're on Instagram as well. Yes, we are. Yes. And we have lots of questions. I apologize. You know, we, we have a lot of people that are asking uh, a lot of different comments. It looks like you have some family on here as well. Um, <laughs> oh, great. I, I, see a, awesome. I, I see a hi, mom. I see a love, mom. Uh, oh, that's always nice. I'm not, I'm not sure who, who is who, but I'm, I'm thrilled that, that you have such a passionate fan base that's, uh, that's online. So the uh, – <laughs> Jordan is asking, says, sounds like your product is doing great. Keep up the good work, boys. That's our golfing partner there. There's another good old Canadian boy down in Texas. <laughs> Excellent. Are your, are your golf courses opening up down in Texas now, too? Or yeah. You're, you're probably up in Texas from where I'm at. Yeah, they've been open. <laughs> Excellent. Hmm. Well, I tell you what, I would love to talk about uh, about cars and hockey and, and golf all day, but uh, – I think these guys probably tune in to talk about whiskey and, and learn about uh, what these two delicious spirits that I have uh, now had a quick quick sample taste because to be honest I can't let a a drum sit in front of me uh, without uh, without tasting a little bit. But uh, would you, which one would you like to start with the the, uh, the bourbon or the uh, the rye? Yeah, you know what? Um, if 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 I may, uh, I'd love to uh, start us with the 
Don Bourbon. Um, the reason being is uh, uh, it's a 92 proof or 46% alcohol. And uh, I'd like to uh, let your uh, palate uh, graduate to the next higher proof point um, and yeah. alcohol content with the rye. Um, so the Texas Con Bourbon Whiskey um, at 46% alcohol, 92 proof, aromatically present on the nose. What you'll find is some lovely uh, roasted nut aroma present um, on the nose and um, a lovely mid palate ability. Now, don't take a giant gulp or anything like that because uh, that's probably your biggest mistake to start is uh, if you're not so um, you know keen on how to properly taste, just, just delicately take a little intake of, uh, of the whiskey, um, let it roll around your palate, swish it around, get a good feel for it, and then uh, when you're ready, um, delicately consume and just kind of let your let your palatability acknowledge what you're experiencing here. Uh, pay attention to whether it's striking you on the tip of your tongue, uh, inside your gums, or if it's uh, all on the outside or in the back of your palate. And if you'll notice with this pecan bourbon, it, it's it's very sweet and neat. Um, it's a 60% corn mash bill, 30% wheat, and 10% malted barley. So that corn and wheat is very very sweet and neat. Um, gives you a lovely, lovely creme brulee and butterscotch mid palate ability. And on the back end, it gives you a lovely vanilla finish paired with hints of smoke. Um, and what I love about this spirit is um, it's a great spirit to drink neat. It's a, it's a great uh, uh, novice or amateur um, um, drinkers drink to really get curious and entice themselves to uh, want to compare and contrast to other spirits. Um, it goes incredibly well with a big rock or a big cube. Um, it becomes incredibly candied um, while the drink just delicately chills without over creating such a large endothermic reaction where you can lose the, uh, the hidden florals and flavor profile and aromas tucked away in there as it gently proofs down. Or if you're a classic cocktail drinker and you, you really enjoy a, a, an old fashioned, um, the Texas Pecan Bourbon Whiskey in an old fashioned, about three shakes of bitters, whether you bottle your fruit or just garnish, um, it really brings out and exploits that smoky essence that's on the back end of this drink. Neat uh, makes a wonderful Manhattan, but uh, I, I will never turn down this drink neat um, on the rocks or in an old fashioned. It, uh, it definitely leads to another one or two or perhaps three. It depends if you're going to be honest. It, it, it's really nice. I uh, I enjoy that. There's a lot of people doing pecan whiskey today, sure. but a lot of them are, are getting it wrong. I think you 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 guys have nailed it because it's the pecan wood is, is definitely there. The sweetness is definitely there, but it's not it's not at all syrupy. And I think that's one of the things that <laughs> has, has scared people away from from some of the other pecan whiskeys that are out there. Uh, but yours definitely is a is a bourbon first, as opposed to something. Uh, Thank you, James. And um, along those lines and notes there, um, this is not artificially flavored at all. Um, so what we are doing is we're taking approximately 159 inches of Texas pecan wood from the tree, and we are having them cut down into approximately 11 to 18 inch staves. Um, we perforate some holes through the staves to increase the surface area, and we inject them into the, to the bourbon barrel for the last six to eight weeks of what we would call a marrying process is taking place here. Uh, the pecan really doesn't take anything away from the bourbon and the bourbon doesn't take anything away from the pecan. It really is a, a, a proper marriage and they, they just really complement each other and go hand in hand to give you that experience. I'm really impressed. Yeah, and then to Tommy S is saying, probably not ideal, but what's the best mixer for those palates that are not too mature yet? And I I don't know your, your view. I'm, I'm not afraid of mixing things. I think a great spirit, it can be enjoyed by itself. But I think... Uh, right. The, the, the true fun of mixology is when you start creating different uh, different combinations. So, I'm curious what uh, what your thoughts are on, on what uh, what would blend well with it. That's a great question, um, uh, James. Thank you. And from Tommy, um, um, I wouldn't recommend you taking our spirits and mixing them with Coca Cola. No, no disrespect to to you know sodas out there, but um, this is really not that type of uh, spirit. This is an ultra premium whiskey. Um, and if you are going to enjoy it as a mixer, I would suggest you research your favorite classic cocktail, whether that be a, a Manhattan, a, a whiskey sour, um, a, 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 a whiskey flip, pardon me, a whiskey sour. And um, you can even go a little bit further and kind of 
go traditional Kentucky for the mint julep if you really want to. Um, I'm not personally the biggest fan, but um, a lot of millennials, I'm a millennial, um, I'm 30, turned 31 here this month. Um, I would say that uh, if you are going to mix any type of soda, I've, I've noticed that a lot of folks are very keen on ginger ale. Um, however, again, I will say I prefer to just mix it with a, a, a splash of water and just open it up a little bit and, and experience new florals. I prefer to drop a rock on it and just delicately let that ice melt down and proof it down a little bit or your classic cocktails. Yeah, um, I think the, the best way uh, to begin with is exactly what you said, you know, you put a rock in it and, um, you know, let it melt down and it's going to open the, the bourbon up and you're going to get some new aromas, new flavors uh, that way. And then you can experience it, you know, a little differently uh, from drinking it neat. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my suggestion uh, would be like being to, you know, put it in a classic cocktail. Uh, my suggestion would be an old fashioned to begin with. Uh, yeah, and I, I, oh, I could see how this, and I haven't made a cocktail with it yet, but I can see how this would go um, exceptionally well on a cocktail. Of course, we always like to try things uh, neat by themselves first. And when I knows this, I get, I, I think the balance is really incredible. What that uh, pecan wood has done um, to the bourbon and what the bourbon is, even I'm sure by itself before that, it's a very well balanced uh, bourbon. Um, I get this nice off off the nose. Uh, this nice smokiness, just a little bit of that, just kind of a, a, just a touch of that, maybe a mesquite or a campfire. And then as I go into it from the smoke, uh, evolves into sweetness, uh, maybe some pastry notes, um, maybe a touch of like peanut butter fudge. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things happening and just this, and a bit of chocolate. I mean, so there's, there's a smoky umami element. There's, um, there's a, this, there's a dessert element and the, the two round off just completely um, nicely. It's a very balanced uh, bourbon whiskey. So I think that, you know, what's happened there with that pecan wood is um, is some real magic. Um, is that what you were you were looking for? Were some notes that that pecan wood would do to make it more magical? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, us being in Texas here, we wanted, a, you know, a relationship with the, you know, the Texas uh, whiskey drinkers. And, you know, there's a lot of barbecue uh, being eaten here in Texas, <laughs> right? They, they love that. So we wanted to have that that smokiness in our product, along with some sweetness, obviously with the you know all the pecan products that are made here during the fall. Uh, it's a it's a great combination, and um, I think we hit it on the nose. Uh, we're very proud of it, and not mm -hmm. much. Again, you know, it just didn't happen right away. There's a lot <laughs> a lot of development, research and development that's gone into this. So. And it was a lot of fun uh, tasting all the samples too. Right. Oh, I bet so. It's uh, you all have done a, a, an exceptional job. It's very nice. It's very unique. It doesn't taste like anything on the market that I can think of, and that's always what I think makes something very special too. It doesn't taste just like another product. It's very unique. Thank you. Thank you. And, you, and you've got some fans from Georgia here too. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Georgia. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> Now, you know, one thing that you guys didn't make, and maybe it's just me, but uh, I get a lot of kind of a flowery, uh, you know, I'm not sure the right, not necessarily just the sweetness, but kind of a flowery uh, notes in here that I'm not sure how much of that's the uh, the nose and how much of that's actually the uh, the flavor, but it seems like that would be something you could also play off nicely with a cocktail, something a little bit more delicate, a little bit more, um, I hate to say feminine, because, you know, frankly, I, I enjoy spritzers and, and summer cocktails, uh, like, you know, as much as the next guy, but... Uh, um, it's a very diverse spirit that I, I wouldn't see you being able to do um, with other, I hate to say straight whiskeys, but with, with with other whiskeys that are just whiskeys. So I think the, uh, I would love to see what a mixologist could do here. Yes. I agree with you, James. There's a lot of, uh, um, there, there's a lot of options here with, the, uh, with, with our products in general. Um, but the, um, Paper plane, for example, you know, uh, that's kind of a uh, different uh, citrusy, if you will, uh, uh, right. cocktail, uh, which really pairs interestingly with the the, the, the roasted nuts aroma of the pecan. Um, so I really advise, you know, mixologists and barkeeps and, you know, bartenders to go out there and 
you know, please, you know, try, try, try making you know, the best of your cocktail of your way with our spirits. And, you know, if you have any, any pointers or advice, you know, I, please don't hesitate to reach out to us through, you know, through our, uh, through our email program and, and let us know what you, you guys and gals feel and think. Yeah. We, we really appreciate the, the love and support. Thank you. Yeah. I, I love paper planes. I, I saw someone had mentioned that I'm a big fan of paper planes. Yeah. So, to be honest, I'm I'm not the expert here. Tom, Tom, and you guys are the experts. I, I saw Regan, a Regan. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, type paper airplane a, a little bit ago, and I was like, well, "That's nice. She likes paper airplanes. That's cool." But I had no idea what to drink, so <laughs> I, uh, I I will I will play the stupid guy here. But I, that's always the fun thing that Tom and I like to bounce off each other. So for those of you who are uninitiated, what exactly is a paper airplane? It's a um, paper, paper plane, rather, I guess. It's about um, an ounce and a half or so of bourbon, um, about an ounce or so of Aperol, and about an ounce of Amaro, just just depending, and some lemon, fresh lemon juice shaken. I mean, you can you can play with those those uh, amounts, but it's just really those plus lemon. That sounds really tasty. I think that yeah. would, that would really be nice with this. With the uh, yeah, it's good sweet. stuff. It's very hydrating. <laughs> yeah, it is very refreshing. Has that old cool Italian flair. So after I go for a bike ride, I can I can come back and be like, oh, and, you know, it's the heck with the Gatorade and the Powerade. I'll just do a paper plane. Exactly. <laughs> that, <laughs> well, I, I will I will tell my cardiologist that then. <laughs> you know, I, I'm really enjoying this. This is great. I'm glad uh, I'm glad your PR uh, person reached out to us because uh, we get we get a lot of pitches between Tom and I. We kind of pass stuff back and forth, but. Um, something in her, in her pitch, I think it was a her, um, that uh, initially reached out, uh, piqued our interest, and I'm glad we uh, we dug further. So, yeah, cheers to that. Yeah, cheers. cheers, to, uh, cheers. To, uh, cheers. For sure, absolutely. Well, uh, that's Elizabeth Cornelius, our our, uh, our head of marketing, and uh, um, you know, she obviously helped set that up. We really appreciate all of her going uh, out of her way to make this happen for us. Excellent. And I tell you what else. The more I taste this, I mean, I think that you know, obviously, once you sit and you think about uh, flavors in a um, in a whiskey, and you you know, you get it. Really, there's this thing called priming the palate, which you know, if you ever have a whiskey, for those of you watching, you don't like it immediately. I always say, take another sip. You know, let that whiskey really do its magic on the tongue. It has to really interact with the saliva. But the more it um, the more it evolves in my mouth, I get some notes that are um, also reminiscent of. Um, you know the best parts of the s'more not 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 doesn't taste like sweet or flavored it's just like i get some graham cracker i get some marshmallow i get some chocolate i kind of get all three of those and sort of this campfire too i mean it has this dessert like thing that's very balanced against some spice and uh and smoke i don't know if you've heard that one but that's i just thought of s'mores as i was tasting this i think you're absolutely right actually it's been and, and, national s'mores day so <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe oh, national with that. Day, is that what that was, James? I'm sorry, what's that? Wait, did you say it was National S'mores Day? Yes, yeah, Saturday is National S'mores Day. Oh, wow. Sign me up. I'm ready. I didn't even know that. What a cool, we'll drink some more of this on Saturday. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm down with that. Of course. And by the way, uh, you know, one of the things that we, we didn't know, but uh, in all of our research and development, trying different whiskeys, we, we learned that. Um, uh, most whiskeys are awesome to drink with desserts and as yeah. well chocolate. So uh, if some of you folks out there that have never tried that, you know, try some of our uh, our Belfort uh, bourbon with some, uh, uh, you know, what was our favorite that we tried? We, we had creme brulee, we had cheesecake, we had carrot cake, we had triple fudge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the triple fudge chocolate cake was the best <laughs> with the bourbon. <laughs> I don't know if you folks can tell, but we kind of have a sweet tooth occasionally. Was it all in one sitting? I like this. Grab <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of chocolate cake in there and just put a little sip of bourbon, swish it around, and you get the explosion of flavors. It's totally an explosion of flavors. They, it's just they, they accentuate one another. Oh, yeah. I can see how it'd be a good compliment to, um, to a great dessert and very dessert-like. I mean, that's the thing. It's... It's enough of the spice and smoke, but it's dessert-like without being too sweet, just like James was saying. It's not too sweet. And I, I think that, uh, Tom, this is a challenge that maybe um, maybe you and I come up with a, a, a s'mores cocktail, 
and uh, we'll compare notes with what you guys can create for a s'mores cocktail. And oh, the nice thing about right. creating cocktails is really nobody loses. Yeah, this is oh, a, yeah. This is a good plan. I we should set this. We, we might be taking over the world here shortly with this s'mores cocktail. I'm not gonna lie, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do it. I'm I'm down for that. <laughs> so you, you heard it here first, guys. Uh, we have uh, well, today's Wednesday, so we've got Thursday and then we got Friday. So Saturday. We will be unveiling a uh, s'mores cocktail. It may not, it, it may not have the uh, the final spit shine polish that uh, that you'd like, but you know the fun thing about cocktails is innovating and trying new things. So, if you guys are down with it, uh, let let's try to put something together and we'll publish it on like the Minute Blog Facebook on on Saturday. Yeah. That'd be that'd be that'd be pretty fun. That'd yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> I love, how did you know it was S'mores Day Saturday? Did you just know that? How did you know that, James? Because I have an amazing wife that makes sure that I know everything important that's on the calendar. Right, right. That's she's doing a great job. Well done, Heather. And, and I don't know if you heard her just say, "Oh," but, but apparently I just I just earned a couple of bonus points. So, uh, and and then she is probably sitting down there. She loves whiskey too. You you know Heather, Tom. Oh uh, yeah. She, and uh, Here's the idea is Heather actually liked. Uh, yeah. Cheers to our wives, our partners, our girlfriends. Right. Uh, she actually liked whiskey uh, before I did. That's a good gal, James. Wow. Hey, you know what they, they say when you find them, don't let them leave. That, yes, <laughs> hey, yes, completely. If you got yourself a whiskey gal, that's the right one to be, you know, tied to. I'll tell you that. Hey, Heather, Heather likes Heather likes trucks. She likes spirits. She likes beer. She likes travel. So. Uh, you know, hey, what more in life could you ask for? That, that sounds like a great gal, James. And, and and right now she's probably about ready to storm the castle trying to grab this bottle. So we better. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll send you some more. <laughs> that that would be awesome. I, uh, it is uh, good. I'm sure she would love that, and I, I will definitely be sharing this with her uh, her as well because I'm sure she'll be involved in in the uh, s'mores cocktail research uh, that we will be doing as soon as the show uh, wraps up. But oh yeah, it's not just about the uh, the bourbon. I could be honest. I could be completely happy if we just stopped now and just said, "Yep, peach pecan." We're not, not peach pecan. <laughs> <laughs> peach or the? You know what? I'm not even gonna go there. These are tongue twisters. Yes. I I could be happy if we just ended right here, saying <laughs> they've got great bourbon. Guys, go go buy it. Check us out on Saturday. We're gonna be talking about something uh, something new you can do with it. But. I'm really excited to try the rye whiskey too. So, oh yeah. Um, it, okay, so what I could give you yeah. folks is the uh, the rye whiskey is a, a 47% spirit, um, and, and that's a 90 uh, 94 proof. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, aromatically present on the nose, you're going to find some uh, dark chocolate, sea salt, and uh, some caramel notes there. Mm -hmm. Um, leading to a uh, mid palatability and, and mid body of some brown sugar and sweet tobacco notes. There will be some dark chocolate present. Pay attention to as you uh, initiate your first sip. You'll find that the palatability is striking you on the back of your palate. This is a rye whiskey made of 70% rye, 20% corn, and 10% malted barley. Now continue to pay attention as that rye is gonna give you that signature rye experience. It's gonna give you a nice warm esophagus leading to a warm belly. About 10 to 15 seconds after you ingest, give yourself a lovely little exhale. And you'll find that the palatability is completely changing now. It's leaving you with a very long, lingering, refreshing, pepperminty after finish. That'll hold for about two to three minutes about the mid esophagus, upper chest area. Um, this rye is not like your typical rye. Uh, most ryes on the shelf that you will experience are 100% rye whiskey, um, 90% uh, and 10% rye whiskey with malted barley or 95.5. Typically, the rye content in the, in the grain bill, the mash bill, is much higher. And the reason why Dad and I chose to go with a 70% the rye, 20% corn, and 10% malted barley is to really cater to uh, the traditional bourbon drinker. Um, to Dad's point earlier, you know, he's he's mentioned that, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, you know, I don't like whiskey or I don't like aged spirits. Well, I can say the same thing for folks, you know, and their perspective on rye whiskeys. Um, if you do a rye right, I think you can really make some wonderful 
uh, floral notes present itself, some lovely earthy notes present itself, and as well give you that nice warming sensation. So we wanted the bourbon drinker to say, hey, rye's not so bad, especially Belfort Spirits rye, because it definitely caters with those sweet notes of the corn and malt bar. Yeah, it's very balanced, and you know that's, that's important to us, to have a, a well-balanced uh, drink, and um, very smooth. It's got the spice, it's got some sweetness to it. Um, we wanted to have both parts, you know, the rye typically have that spice and we do have a little spice in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've had people say to us, uh, you know, we don't tell them what it is and they're like, oh wow, that's a, a really uh, interesting bourbon. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of chuckling when, you know, sorry to tell you, but that's our rye whiskey. And they're like really surprised that it's a rye whiskey. And, and the reason why is because it's so easy and smooth to drink. And um, that's that's what we tried to achieve. And uh, that that mash bill, um, it's a wonderful mash bill. Uh, it's, a, it's an old mash bill from uh, the Northeast. I believe it started out in Pennsylvania. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. So where do, you, where do you get your inspiration? So are some of these uh, family recipes or some of these, like you said, that one just came from, uh, from Pennsylvania? Yeah, so... There's different uh, recipes from, from you know, the past and, and, you know, what's out there right now. And we would do all kinds of tastings, Dana and I together, and we'd be like, yeah, we don't really like that flavor. We're, we're leaning more to this. And um, one of the ones that influenced, influenced us quite a bit was Michter's rye. Mm -hmm. uh, we really thought it was a smooth rye, mm -hmm. easy to drink. And... Uh, um, we, we still like their rye a lot, yeah. Yeah. and uh, we believe that uh, that brought us down to the path of, of trying to create a well-balanced rye whiskey, and, and that's what we try to achieve with ours. Now, my, yeah, I, uh, I love my, my, my wife is downstairs, so she, she says love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and for those of you guys who I, who I didn't throw up on the screen, I apologize, but my wife always gets uh, precedence over everybody else. So <laughs> sorry if I missed anybody else. I like the fact that you all, because a lot of rides in the market are higher content ride for, for uh, mash bill. And those are great, but I like the fact that you did something really unique. Again, with the bourbon, it was something unique. With the rye, it's a special uh, old recipe. I've heard about these, uh, these Pennsylvania-style ryes uh, from that area of the world. Um, that the country, um, it's really interesting. You you said chocolate. I I did get dark chocolate right away. There's this really luscious, um, um, I would say luscious, really kind of luscious, silky element to it that gives chocolate a uh, little hint of uh, so maybe some black pepper, and um, I get that that chocolate that cocoa thing happening. Maybe even a touch of something um, kind of unexpected. Uh, I get kind of a tropical note in the in the middle, like maybe some coconut, uh, maybe something like a really good. I don't. What's the name of that candy bar that has chocolate and coconut both? Like mounds. 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 Thank you. Mounds. I, maybe like a touch of that. Not not too much of the coconut, but I mean, there's this. There are these fun, sweet things happening at the center of it that are just beautiful, and there's a creaminess about it all the way through. So it's it's a very unique rye. I think it's really something special. Yeah, and I like the fact that the, the spiciness uh -huh. of the rye isn't overpowering. Which some, right. some ryes, I, you know, I, I like. I usually like big bold flavors. And I can appreciate a rye that is that's really spicy, but I, I wouldn't drink more than just the sample. And I think this is a, a rye that you know a, a non a non rye guy if that uh, could uh, could enjoy just as as a whiskey that's something different. Exactly, agree with you, James. It's definitely a different experience. Um, and jump back over to Tom, uh, uh, trying to find out that flavor profile that's kind of tucked away in that rye. Right. I didn't give you uh, my my uh, my notes on uh, you know cocktails. Um, and what I love about the Texas Con bourbon and the rye whiskey is compare them and contrast them both in in cold fashion. Do the same amount of bitters, um, uh, right around three four shakes of bitters, whether you muddle your fruit or just garnish. Within the rye, you'll we'll find that. There is a very, very underlying cinnamon note that is exploited in the cocktail of old fashion. Um, so mm -hmm. you might be getting a little bit of a twang there of some some cinnamon notes there, uh, Tom. Um, and yep. when you make your old fashioned, right away, because it's going to almost 
jump right out of the glass and, and smack you. You're going to be like, I never, I never would have expected to experience cinnamon out of this. Nice. Of the bitters. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I like that. I, and I think I even get some of that spice. There's a real nice uh, warmth at the end. It has a really beautiful finish that cleans up really nicely. It's warm. It's a little spicy zest. And I can see how that would be really beautiful. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. So I feel like there's some there's some interfamily stuff going on here. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Holly what, wants uh, to see the new. Puppy. Uh, Holly wants to see the new puppy. Does that make sense to you guys, or is that just random yeah, uh, that's in that chatter? That's my, uh, that's my little cousin, and uh, that's my aunt, my mom, and, my, sister. and uh, my dad just got a a, a baby blue uh, five what five. Four and, a half, four and a half months, almost five months old. Uh, her name's Happy, and uh, she's definitely a handful, right, Edward? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Happy the puppy. Uh, she, she's definitely a character and an entertainer, to say the least, and a lot of energy. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Dogs can be wonderful. Uh, yeah, they're awesome. Back to whiskey. Apparently, uh, Rita's look. Loves Michter's and she says she can barely find a bottle in Canada. She's looking for waiting wow. for Belfour Spirit. So, well, we're looking forward. Hopefully you guys have such animated fans. Yeah, we can't wait to get the the juice to back in the motherland. Uh, I got a bunch of my old uh, Canadian teammates basically sending me emails and text messages every few weeks asking me what the hell I'm doing. So uh, apparently, I'm not working hard enough. But I'd love to get the juice in all your guys and gals' hands up there. Trust me, we, we want that to happen for sure. Right. I figure, I figure it's like a kind of reverse, uh, reverse nineteen twenties, where the Canadians were running uh, booze into the U.S. and now we're trying, <laughs> to, <laughs> we're trying to go north across the border. Right. Something, something tells me that the that the booze you're rushing across the border going northbound is a whole lot better than the uh, the Canadian stuff that uh, they're rushing down to uh, <laughs> the U.S. a hundred years ago. So yeah, James. I've got a lot of family close to the border. You didn't hear me say that, okay? <laughs> it, 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 it's all good. I, I have fam I well, unfortunately, most of them have passed, but I have uh, I have family in uh, Vancouver, so uh, okay. I've awesome. Family, I've got family in, De in Detroit, so the yeah, awesome. nice thing is, uh, if if all things go to hell here, we'll just go and pretend to be honorary Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will I will learn to enjoy whiskey that is blended with uh with artificial coloring and artificial uh artificial color if that's what it takes but i much i much prefer stuff that you guys are making down in texas and the america the uh, united states spirit industry because i know uh, uh the canadians swear by the, swear by canadian whiskey but it just ain't the same when you're mixing stuff that's not uh not uh natural yeah we totally agree um you know we even go to the point of trying to make sure that we don't use any uh GMO grains that's uh, one of the things that we've we've asked uh, you know as part of our management bills. Are you, I, know, I know right now you guys are in in Dallas. Are you guys is the um, is the company actually in Dallas proper or like you know Addison or Irving or something or? No, our so right now what we're doing is we've been working on our own distillery plans for about the last two and a half years, three years. Uh, we did have plans to have our distillery here in Texas. Uh, just wasn't working out. Every time we get something going, we'd run into some kind of legalities or problems with the city or the town that we were trying to work in. And um, the consultants that we hired from Kentucky, right from the beginning, were trying to convince us that we needed to put our distillery in Kentucky. And Dane and I did the bourbon tour. Uh, we went to Moonshine University in Kentucky. So we learned a lot about Kentucky bourbon and, and the, the ways of making whiskey. And so we've, through the years, decided uh, that we're going to be in Kentucky with our distillery. Um, hopefully within the next two and a half years, uh, we'll open the doors at Belfour Spirits. Uh, we can't tell you the, the city yet, but we've narrowed it down and uh, we just can't announce it yet because of what's been going on. The timing isn't perfect sure. yet, but uh, right now we're just contracting with Southern Distilling out of uh, Statesville, North Carolina. Yeah, Pete and Deanna Barger, uh, they're partners up, partner up with us. They've done a great job for us. Uh, they let us come in and do tastings there. They let us 
uh, you know, come in and run the, the still. We, we can mash out if we want. They, they let us do a lot of things that no other distilleries would do uh, for contract uh, uh, distilling. And, and we have a great relationship with them. Uh, we've done with them right over, I think, 2,100 barrels now uh, that we have aged wow. of bourbon and bourbon. Um, so we'll be we'll have a lot of whiskey when we when we get ready to open our doors, which will give us a little head start. Uh, we plan on putting an 18 inch column in our distillery, which produces approximately 15,000 barrels a year. We're gonna have a nice restaurant lounge, a nice gift center, a nice coffee shop. Of course, we're gonna do all the tours. We'll have a nice banquet hall, and uh, one of the best parts of it is we're gonna have a nice hidden speakeasy, which will be a lot of fun. Right. That sounds, that sounds awesome. That's great. And I'll say this too. Uh, they do a great job there. I, I know those people well. It's it's, it's Southern Distilling Company. Uh, they make amazing products. And I'll tell you this. Their whiskeys, obviously, they're making great whiskeys. People love that cream liqueur they do. That cream liqueur is something else. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. It's like the best cream liqueur in the world. It's so good. They're great people. So that's really cool. Is, is, that, is that based on a, a bourbon cream or what is that? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's the best one I've ever had. Yeah, James, you should definitely go go find yourself a bottle and yeah. enjoy a little bit uh, of coffee or you know, make some best Irish coffee. coffee for sure. They put chocolate, just... coffee, bourbon, and cream together, and it's like this beautiful elixir. <laughs> but obviously, what a great place to start your um your distilling. I think that's a that that was a great choice, and that'll be and so you're not announcing quite yet where the distillery will be, but you'll be announcing it soon. Yeah, yeah. As soon as uh, you know things start to open back up and you know all the chaos has kind of subsided, uh, we yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah, we're so excited to announce that, and we can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Will, that, will that mostly be most likely be in Texas, or are you gonna stay? <laughs> that'll be someplace in Texas, then. No, no, we're gonna be in Kentucky. Okay, so they're oh, okay. Okay, okay. I was wondering the same thing, James. I was, I yeah. thought I was following. So you're gonna be someplace in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be in Kentucky. It's exciting. Yeah. Well, in case we needed just one more reason to do a uh, another bourbon trail <laughs> tour, Tom. That's right. We can come visit. Go visit. Well, come this way. I'll go that way. I'm not too far away. So probably any place in Kentucky, I'm not too far away from. Might be yeah. closer than you think, Tom. So. <laughs> Might be closer. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so let's say. So what you're saying is we can play 20 questions here. Yeah, we'll do, a, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a, a sip for every uh, every wrong answer until we get the right answer. <laughs> yeah, that, James, if we if we keep pouring these uh, you know these glasses here, I think we're going to get to the answer quicker than we all expect. <laughs> hey, you know you, your bottles are a lot bigger than my bottles, so I think you guys can be the ones that are going to going to lose out on the loose loose lip sink uh, sink distilleries, I guess. As yeah. be, but what's the bottle really we episode see, um... in the second or third hour? Is that a special bottle in the middle with the kind of the taller? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that represents the first 12 barrels that Dane made himself. Uh, he did that internship at Woody Creek Distillery in Basalt, Colorado. And oh, wow. He was there for what, seven months? Yeah. Just the seven months. He worked at the distillery during the day, learning how to uh, make whiskey. And then at night, he would co coach hockey. So it was a Perfect uh, fit and relationship for Dane. Um, and you go ahead and tell him, tell yeah. him about it because uh, I know you had a great time there. Yeah, it was a very special time uh, transitioning from my uh, my hockey career um, and, and, and into uh, my career of distillation with, with my family. It was really a silver lining moment. Um, I, I got to uh, intern and distill during the day uh, from about 8 to 2, 8 to 3, right around there. And then uh, I rush home real quick, you know, have a protein shake, uh, stay home for about an hour, hour and a half, and drive to the rink in Aspen and then work out myself. And then my kids would show up about a, an hour, hour and a half later after my workout, and we'd go work out, do dry, uh, uh, dry land training together, and then get on the ice. And I'd get home every night for uh, old fashions and hot potties and uh, Irish uh, coffees at about the 9 30, 10 o'clock. <laughs> I did that for about uh, just just shy eight months, so right around seven months there. Um, I can't thank uh, uh, Pat and Mary Scanlon, Mark and Tracy Kleckner, uh, Dave and Kenny Matthews, uh, Dave Matthews, my distillation mentor, and Mark Kleckner, and uh, not Dave Matthews, the rocker and the jammer. <laughs> you know, also, 
if I met Dave Matthews, I think this other Dave Matthews and Dave, they probably be, be great friends because they're pretty cool guys. So they, they got that going for them, both me and Dave Matthews. Um, again, very thankful to Woody Creek. I fell in love with the mountains out there. Um, and uh, I, I, I got I to gotta be really thankful for the opportunity to go uh, uh, on a family hunting trip with my father there the season before because if we had never gone on to uh, go uh, on our first elk hunt, hunting adventure together, uh, we never would have had the opportunity to go into distillation with Woody Creek and uh, you know, we wouldn't be here before with the spirits that you have now to enjoy. So uh, really, really special moment in my heart and uh, I, I can't wait to uh, one day you know, give my thanks back to Woody Creek a little bit more and uh, yeah. get my little brother involved more when he becomes 18. And uh, it's just, it yeah. started a legacy for my family, guys. Yeah. Yeah. This bottle here represents the first 12 barrels that Dane made himself. And I remember the day he called me filling the last barrel. He was sipping on the white dog and he was crying. And he's like, Dad, you know, it tastes so good. It smells great. And it's amazing. And he was crying and so emotional, and, and that day, you know, his heart and soul goes into everything he does. And uh, there's only uh, approximately 2,600 bottles of this, uh, all numbered. Uh, they're the limited edition straight rye whiskey. It's 100 proof. Um, it has the same mash bill as our as our regular rye, but it doesn't taste at all the same. They're much different in in uh, profile. And I would highly suggest uh, everyone out there to grab one of these bottles if, if you see one, because there's not many of them left, and uh, we won't be making uh, that particular product again for a while, um, if if at all. So uh, very proud of that. Um, the other thing we did with this package, uh, we made a beautiful uh, uh, box uh, holder for it, and um, I gave. Uh, a bottle, each bottle of these to one of my teammates uh, that we won the Stanley Cup with in 1999, put their names uh, right here on the front of the chalice with their uh, jersey number on it, uh, which matched uh, the bottle number coming off of the production line. Uh, so for me, I was number 20. I got number 20 uh, bottle. Uh, nice. Mike Madonna got number nine bottle. So uh, we're very proud of this package. And... Uh, you know, we get a lot of compliments about the bottle and and uh, and, and the whiskey too. I mean, you got to try the whiskey. It is uh, truly another well balanced product. Um, I like to tell everyone uh, this is maybe a little bit more suited to the Scotch drinker. Um, you know, a lot of Scotch drinkers, you know, say, "Hey, you know, I've never drank rye whiskey before." Well, I said to them, "Well, please, you know, try ours because it it, it would." Be a good introductory uh, rye whiskey for you to try, and this uh, this is the box that oh wow the bottle's held in. It's got a beautiful harlequin pattern on it, and um, we're very proud. Where, where can people find that? Is that is there is that available through your locator, or is that uh, kind yeah. of a, a, a hidden gem? Yeah, so most stores will have at least one of those bottles. Um, and we've done, uh, you know, a few uh, uh, meet and greets at some of the uh, stores, and you know, we've had people come up there with like ten of them at a time. And um, I think the stores started realizing they, they needed to put a, a limit on how many bottles they were going to sell each person. Uh, you know, because we we'd like everybody to get one. So um, a very unique package, and uh, again, very proud. And, and Dave did an awesome job. You know, couldn't do uh, do it with alcohol crew, um, and that's that's something that I really uh, I can pride our family on, as we all kind of have our specialties in different areas. Um, I, I love working with the distillates, so White Lightning is one of my favorite uh, uh, distillates to create. And if you can create some wonderful White Lightning before you enter the maturation phase, um, you're going to make some great bourbon or great yeah. rice in the long run. Sure. That's where I have to pride, you know, dad on um, dad or the mad scientist, as we call him within our corporate family. Uh, he has the ability to research and develop for hours on hours and days and days, weeks on end. It doesn't matter how find the answer. Um, so dad gives us 60% of the flavor profile by directly working with 
our cooperages um, and, and developing our custom profiles of posted barrels and charred barrels. And of course, where the region of the oak is sourced from is extremely important. And I have to write that on that because uh, without them, we wouldn't have the presentation that, um, uh, when it came to the matured product. So uh, we're really thankful for that on that one. Thanks, Dad. Nice. You're right. Rita, Rita oh, agrees. I would like a turbo charger for my birthday. Maybe some direct port. <laughs> And uh, I don't know, something fun like that, maybe. How about some new bourbon? Some more bourbon. Some magic bourbon. Some magic bourbon. We got something coming. I got something on my sleeve for you. <laughs> you always got to have an ace up your sleeve. Well, Rita agrees. She said, if anybody does anything 100%, it's, it's Edward Dane and, and Reagan Belfort. Trust me, I know. So <laughs> the, uh, I think anybody watching this has picked up on that. So it's, it's great to see. Not only the fact that uh, the conversation is great, and you guys definitely love to do what you're doing, and clearly this the spirit is the product is phenomenal. Oh yeah, but it's it's uh, it's awesome to see you have such a passionate uh, group of fans too. So thank you, James. Uh, fan, fans yes, and well family, done. And, and, and probably much. fans as well as family too. So yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. Cheers. Thank Thanks you. all the Cheers, fans. gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Well, I'm absolutely loving this. Uh, this the pecan wood uh, bourbon that's really so good uh, thank fantastic. you fantastic yeah so i guess uh with that being said we're, we're at about 56 minutes right now so unless there's anything else i guess we'll probably just wrap it up and uh, tom and i can, can go hit our uh, recipe books and try to create this uh, <laughs> we're gonna do this some more no, that's right I'm, 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 I'm not it. sure i'm not sure what the winner gets except for a smile on their face but uh <laughs> <laughs> I, you know I'm glad you guys accepted our challenge and we'll uh we'll come back on uh, on Saturday and bring that up. Yes. So, um, cool, guys. Yeah. And again, everybody who's watching, make sure you go to visit Belfortspirits.com. Yes. These guys are, are a lot of fun and, and uh I wish everybody right now could could taste it through the uh through the camera as it were. Yeah. But uh you know, in in lieu of that, the wonderful thing about being isolated in our apartments now is that we have a amazing service called Drizzly. Who I'm not being paid for, uh, but I I'm probably uh, helping their bottom line by promoting the crap out of it. Uh, you know, having Instacart and Drizzly and all these delivery services, plus FedEx and UPS has been a uh, a great uh, lifeline for a lot of us. So that's right. Thank you guys for making great spirits. Thank you uh, guys for delivering the spirits, and thank yes. you uh, all of you. Not the least of which is for watching this because uh, without viewers, we would just be drinking by ourselves, and that's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, James, and thank you, Tom. And yeah. you know, stay tuned to Belfort Spirits because uh, later this year you're going to learn about our new American whiskey and the Belfort's going on the American tour promoting it. And we're going to have a lot of fun going on the road together. So stay tuned at wow. Belfort.com about that trip. Right, that'll be a, the Amer a, a new release, American whiskey. Yeah, you bet. Be, and when do you think that'll be out? Hopefully later this fall. Cool. That'll be great to try. That'll be wonderful. Yeah. Well, we will definitely have you back on. And I'm sure right about now, Tom is sitting there going, well, he wants uh, he wants a conversation with you guys just by himself on his show. <laughs> but, uh, I, I have a feeling there is, there is more than enough uh, of a conversation to go around between both of us. So, oh, uh, yeah. A lot uh, of good whiskey, a lot of good conversations. It's such such a great time with you guys tonight. This has been a lot of fun. Oh. Yeah. Thanks for having us, guys. Thanks, James. Cheers. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Cheers.